Hello and welcome to Azure Terraformer, coming to you directly from the Southern Command Station in sunny Destin, Florida. Big news today, it's August 10th, and there were some major announcements made around HashiCorp licensing. I thought I would drop onto the website and just analyze it live with you guys. So this is the uh, HashiCorp licensing fact page um, where they specifically mention the, the announcements that was made today. Um, I'm just going to go through it and dispel, you know, let's, let's go to the source, let's dispel any rumors, you know, and let's think about what the impact is. So what did HashiCorp announce today on August 10th? Um, HashiCorp announced a full transition from the Mozilla public license to the business source license, BSL, for future releases of all products in several libraries. So right off the bat, the question is, does this actually apply to anything that people are currently using today in terms of binaries, um, releases, and libraries? So products, products I suppose you, you could call Terraform Cloud. I suppose you could call um, HashiCorp Vault, Terraform Enterprise, Vault Enterprise. Um, libraries, I mean, are we talking, um, does Terraform open source fall under product or does it fall under a library? Um, may, may, you know, you could make the case that Terraform open source falls under, you know, a product. Um, it is an open source product. It, it's distinct from Terraform Enterprise and Terraform Cloud in that it's a standalone tool. Um, and then libraries. I don't know, is this the Terraform uh, providers that, that they publish themselves? I don't know, it could be. Um, why is uh, HashiCorp making this change? So yada, 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 value of open, openly sharing source code, enabling practitioners to solve their problems, building communities, creating transparency, yada, yada, yada. HashiCorp provides feature-rich products for the community for free. I think, I think you see where this is going. We're not a charity. We want to make some money. We're not allergic to money. We we like money here at, at the HashiCorp, and we want to make some money. By shifting to this license, HashiCorp can better manage commercial uses of our source code and continue to invest in our thriving community. Yeah, basically, they want to make some money, okay? So if you're going to go take their open source tools, make a commercial offering that, you know, really is just a very thin value layer on top of their open source tools, they're probably going to come for you. Just uh, spoiler alert. Okay. Uh, what's up next? What are the implications of this change for end users of HashiCorp's open source products? For end users who are using HashiCorp's current open source products and new releases using the BSL license for their internal or personal usage, there is no change. Okay. There it is. If you are using Terraform open source for your internal enterprise, small business, large business, whatever, personal usage, there is no change. This is not a bait and switch for enterprise customers. What are the implications of this change for integration partners of HashiCorp? Integration partners that are building integrations with our products, including Terraform providers, Azure, AWS, yada, yada, vault plugins, and other product integrations, there is no change. Boom. End of story. What are the implications of this change for commercial customers of HashiCorp, i.e., you build a solution, you release your, you, you provision your infrastructure um, that does X, Y, Z, and you provision your infrastructure using Terraform, open source. You don't pay, you don't pay HashiCorp anything for that. Um, you use, you use Vault internally within your solution. You don't, you know, you don't use the open source version of Vault. That's your choice. You, you don't pay HashiCorp for that nothing changes okay um that you like you're offering a commercial service you happen to be using terraform vault whatever nothing changes okay um that's how i read that so who is impacted by this change organizations providing competitive offerings to hashicorp will no longer be permitted to use the community edition products free of charge under the bsl license Commercial licensing terms are available and can enable use cases beyond the BSL's limitations. If you are building a solution that integrates with HashiCorp products, you want to talk to us, to, you know, there's the email. Okay. Competitive is a subjective term, right? So what do we look at here? 
um, what does it mean to be a competitive offering? HashiCorp uh, considers a competitive offering to be a product or service to users or customers outside of your organization that has significant over overlap with the capabilities of HashiCorp's commercial products, offerings, or services. So, but for example, the definition would include providing HashiCorp tool as a hosted service or embedding HashiCorp products in a solution that is sold competitively against our offerings. If you need further clarification, please, you know, with respect to a particular use case, send them an email, we'll talk to them. Custom licensing terms are also available. Long story short, if you take Vault and you make that the core component, core technology of a password management service, <laughs> and then you build a REST API on top of Vault, and strap strap on Google Auth and whatever, and you sell people password management services, and pretty much your whole, like ninety percent of your iceberg of a solution is Vault, and just a very thin veneer of a REST API um, sitting on top of Vault. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be host. You're gonna be toast. Okay. Another example: if you take Terraform open source CLI and you host it in containers and you, you build a framework that will basically run Terraform, let it clone, you know, a Terraform repo or let it clone a source code repo and run Terraform against it, manage the Terraform state, do all those things that Terraform Cloud does. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you're going to be toast pretty much. That's pretty much what they're saying. Like, you can't take their open source stuff repackage it in a different box and call it your own commercial SaaS service and expect to make money, okay? To me, this makes sense, okay? So don't listen to all the doomers out there on, on, on Twitter or X or whatever it's called, you know, that are saying, oh, I'm so disappointed in HashiCorp. Look, we knew the shoe that was going to drop someday. The reality is HashiCorp can't continue to operate as a charity, okay? They built some amazing tools. They're trying to figure out how to monetize that. I respect that. Okay. As they mentioned, this is not affecting the open source community. This is not affecting commercial enterprises that use these tools to release their own software or, or their own environments in different clouds. Uh, this, is, this is really targeted at people that th thought that it was a really good idea and a very ethical one at that to go take somebody else's thing you know, basically use a bunch of bailing wire and duct tape and resell it as their own thing. That's that's what this is about, right? So, yeah, I mean, if you thought that was a, a, a good long-term, like, business strategy, it's probably not going to work out well for you. So, anyways, that's my take. Um, this is a big nothing burger, in my opinion. Um, it really only affects those folks that thought they could just take you know, um, you know, HashiCorp stuff and resell it as their own um, creative works by adding a very thin value layer on top of it. Now, has that idea crossed my head? Sure, um, but you know, I kind of, I kind of felt like um, if I were to go build a service like that, um, probably my exit strategy as a startup would be to get purchased by HashiCorp anyway. But since they're well on their way with the Terraform cloud, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I hope this helps kind of navigate the new license drop uh, with, with HashiCorp that they made today. Um, again, it's not a huge deal for the open source community. Um, if, you don't, if you don't use Terraform cloud, it's not like you go, have to go use it now. Um, if you don't pay HashiCorp a bunch of money, you don't have to go pay them a bunch of money. Um, it's not, it's not, this is not HashiCorp trying to cut the legs out of the open source community. This is HashiCorp trying to defend their paycheck, trying to figure out how to monetize this great technology that they provide essentially for free. Um, now, I have, I have some thoughts, okay? Um, you know, if Armand or, you know, anybody, if Mitchell will ever want to talk, talk to me, I have some thoughts, um, you know, about how, you know, they have a lot of leverage already with the hyperscalers in that they're providing a fabulous service to the hyperscalers. They are providing uh, an infrastructure as code solution that 
bar none is better than any infrastructure as code solution that any of the hyperscalers have. Some some of the cloud platforms have already like been like, hey, we're late to the game. We're just going to use we're just we're just going to use uh, Terraform, right? AWS, Azure have already got their own thing, um, so that's not the case. But if you think about it, you know, HashiCorp is essentially this very nice uncle that that implemented you know a universal infrastructure as code service you know for all the clouds um and they did it for free and they continue to do it for free um you know on the backs of their shareholders um and you know the venture capitalists that that I'm surely have surely have funded them um but if you think about how many consumption dollars Terraform providers put into the pockets of AWS, Azure, GCP, that's a lot of revenue, right? And that's a lot of revenue that, you know, granted, probably would have gotten there eventually, you know, eventually somehow. But HashiCorp is providing a vital service in that they are making it easier to generate consumption dollars for these hyperscalers. So I think, you know, this 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 makes sense. This kind of shores up leakage ip leakage to these kind of copycats out there that are just going to steal their stuff and you know you know create a thin layer th thin value layer on top but i do think where the big money is for hashicorp is figuring out a way to derive re real bottom line dollars from the hyperscalers um based on the consumption based on the consumption that they drive to those to those uh cloud platforms. And I think the only way that they can really drive that is if they have real metrics on all of the resources that are provisioned to AWS and to Azure and to GCP and all those places. Because if because if you know the, the C suite at HashiCorp can sit down with the C suite at Amazon, at Azure, you know, and and talk through, look, this is how much Azure revenue we generate through the Azure RM provider. This is how much revenue we we drive onto AWS, onto Google Cloud. I think that would be a game changer, right? And you know, you think about all these different sales channels that you know the hyperscalers have. Ter Terraform is, you know, got to be a significant chunk of the revenue dollars that the that these uh, that these cloud platforms are seeing. So, I, I you know, again, I haven't been consulted. <laughs> I, I do jest, okay. Um, but uh, if if I were to give my advice to to Armand and Mitchell, um, that would be it. You know, figure out how you can monetize the consumption model with these hyperscalers, and your problems will go away because um, you are generating a tremendous amount of value, um, and it's just a matter of finding out finding a way to create a reciprocal relationship between these hyperscalers. Anyways, that's it for me. Um, just thought I'd weigh in on this topic. It uh, seems like it's been buzzing a little bit on LinkedIn and Twitter, and um, thought I'd uh, thought I'd share my thoughts um, on this topic. Um, anyways, I've got uh, my Azure DevOps provider uh, coding thing going on right now. Um, I'm down here in the Southern Command uh, for Azure Terraformer here in De beautiful Destin, Florida. I'll be back up in Ohio next week. And uh, I'll be uh, pumping out more great content for you guys, hopefully. Um, if you if you do enjoy my channel, you do enjoy my content, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. And until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.